Karen Virtual, Creative Katie here. Welcome to my channel, Mixpedia Creations. Take time to hit the subscribe button. And when you click on the bell, you can choose the option to be notified as soon as I upload. That way you won't miss any videos. Today we have a video in the 12 Days of Christmas series. If you wish to support my channel, you can do so by shopping my Amazon influencer links or donating directly through PayPal link. Both of these links can be found in the description box below. Thank you so much for all your support. Welcome back to my 12 Days of Christmas. Today I am using something in my stash, which is these, I'm not sure what they're called, kind of gift tubes, I guess that I won two years ago in a 12 Days of Christmas uh, giveaway from a now local craft shop, Clipper Street, which is in Langley, BC. Love that place, so I'm gonna give them a shout out. And I won a bunch of Christmas stuff. And this just has stayed in my stash. It moved with me from Saskatchewan and it has been in my stash and I just relocated it when I was doing some organizing and I am going to use these and turn them into something Christmas. So they're gonna be kind of like Christmas bags in here. So they are kind of, they're craft colored and I could leave them that way, but I am going to apply a coat of gesso to it. Now, it's just plain white gesso and it's a little on the thinner side, but use whatever gesso you have. Now I'm putting gesso on this because I am going to Again, continue using stuff out of my stash. Some of the, my distress crayons and some paints and I just wanna be able to um, have a good surface that everything's going to adhere to and I can have some fun doing some different techniques. I'm thinking I'm gonna do like adding to texture by removing through a stencil. Now, because this isn't, you know, necessarily, I don't know what kind of paper this is, or it's not necessarily intended for uh, a lot of moisture, I'm going to do one side and dry it, and then do the other side and dry it. And I've done one here, and it, it took the gesso fairly well, what I noticed is on the side you kind of have to make sure that that gets in there. Now I'm not sure that this isn't going to peel off once you know once we start using this if once it gets used. It's kind of a consumable gift tag, gift bag. You know if people keep it and repurpose it, reuse it just like we do our gift bags that would be a great thing. So, um, as I was saying with this, before I got off on a tangent, sorry, I did afterwards dry it from the beginning. And I'm taking these precautions because I, do, I don't want this to warp and get out of shape. So I'm taking my time, gesso one side dry, gesso the other side dry, and then do from the inside to make sure that it is all dry. So I'm going to finish, I've got five in total, so we're gonna do all five of them, all in a Christmas theme, so we'll get some ideas that you might like one of these ideas, and you might decide, hey, that's what I wanna put on my Christmas card or my art journal page, because all of these things can be used for all those different purposes. And, you know, it doesn't have to just go on this. But, you know, if you find some of these, I'm sure I could probably find a pattern for this on my Silhouette Cameo, and I could cut this out of um, watercolor paper or mixed media paper. So, as I said, I'm going to do all this. You don't need to watch me gesso it. 
and I will be back when they are all gessoed and dried. So after making sure they're dried, I am going to start with number one. I will be doing five of them. This is a darkroom stamp, script stamp, and it's brand new. So I have decided I need to mark which way is up because I want it. The words can be readable, but um, I don't want to put it upside down. So I'm just marking it. And I'm stamping this before I put any paint on. And this is a good technique to use on most anything. I love this script stamp. I was searching for a script stamp that was bigger than my French script stamp. So these, this is bigger and it looks lovely as a background stamp and I think I'll be using it to make some of my de designer tissue papers. So when I started this, I really had no idea what I was going to put on each of these tubes. And because it's a tube, I could paint the background, the back, just a solid color. And I do that on one of them. But for, for the most part, I do the same thing on both sides. So here you see me going in with yellow. Uh, I believe that's Naples yellow and it's Hooker's green. And I love this color combination. I want it to look like a pine tree, a Christmas tree, using the plastic wrap technique. Now, as I said, I'm going to be doing five of these tubes and each one is slightly different using different materials and different techniques. So while the video may be long, you're getting a lot of content here. And you can use these same techniques making a Christmas card, um, an art journal page, what have you. Any size will work. Now these are Christmas ornaments that I had in my stash that I cut out with my silhouette actually last year and never did use. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use my stash, get these out. You know, this is these were cut out of my gel prints that I had and there's another shape. And so I'm using the Stabilo All Pencil and smudging. Actually, no, this is a charcoal, woodless charcoal pencil. And I'm smudging it to get the effect. Now, one of the cautionary things is if you are going to seal this or use wet medium on it, you may not want to do that because it will reactivate later. But, you know, I thought, I do so much of the float technique, the floating acrylic technique to shading. I just wanted to remind people that if you can't master that or don't want to master that, there are other ways of shading your items. Then I just needed to edge it. Again, I, it's, a, it's ingrained in me. With the charcoal pencil, you got to keep your fingers clean. And I'll put a link to the fine liner bottle, the woodless charcoal pencils, and, and the various materials and supplies that I've used in this video, should you want to get them or see what they are. Using the fine liner bottle just to outline these items. I just find it quicker than a micron pen and it's permanent and you know as you practice again if you practice 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 using the fine line bottle you should be able to find that it's going to be um, quite easy to use here i'm just adding a string so these look like ornaments hanging on a tree there was you know i did wait in between to dry the other side because i'm doing both sides and splattering with gold, of course. So pillow box number two, I'm using my distress, distress crayons and I've got an assortment of greens and blues and yellows and golds in there. And I'll put a link to the kits, the colors that I have, and I'm just smudging them. Now the distress crayons, you need to smudge them pretty quickly. And here I grabbed the wrong yellow. It was more brownish and was giving a more antique kind of look than what I 
initially envisioned. In the end, I've made that work. And I find for the Christmas trees, if you add a little bit of blue in there, it just makes the green pop. So there, I'll go back to a different yellow. And I'm just smudging and blending the colors. You can get your fingers a little wet, and that, that helps it move it a little bit. But I enjoy using the dist Distress Crayons. And again, I'm creating a background that's going to look like a Christmas tree or a Christmas wreath. At this point, I, I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with it. So this is Big Wreath, a Crafter's Workshop stencil, and I'm just pulling some of the Distress Crayon off through the stencil. And I'm going to admit right now, this is wasn't quite the effect that I was going for. It, something was off. You know how you have that picture of something in your head and when you do it, it doesn't quite work out. So I'm not 100% happy with the background. But it is making me feel antique or whatever. So I grab my old music sheets and I cut out my tree shape that I've made a template of and use with my plaid tidings. And I'm just edging this with sepia, archival ink. I'm thinking I'm going to embrace the antique or old vintage look. And I'm putting some gel medium on. Now, the thing with gel medium, as long as I don't rub too hard, I will not activate the Distress Crayon. The, it allows you some things. It look, a little leeway there. As long as you're not overly putting pressure on. You have to add that pressure for it to really activate, which is one of the joys of the Distress Crayons. Then I'm doing the float technique and just edging it a little bit more, these trees, just to make them pop and off the background. Because you want your focal point to stand out. And I'm just adding a little detail with the same. And edging it, as always. And I don't know that I, if I show it or not, but I, I, I do this on both sides. You can use watercolor pencils if you want all the colors because you'll have lots of browns. You can use your, I could use my Distress Crayons to smudge and to shade around those trees as well. And then I decide to add a little bit of splatter in the brown. And drying it between layers. And I'm able to lift it off the trees where if it falls where I don't want it because there's a coat of gel medium on there. And that just kind of gives a little bit of resist, gives you a little playtime. And then, of course, I have to splatter with gold, too. Gold makes everything better. So I'm taking that same gold, and I'm just painting it on this sheet of paper. And I'm, I'm spreading it way more than what I'm going to use for this project, because I know I have another project in mind where I'm going to use this gold for another thing. And once you have the paint out and the paint has, you've dirtied off, dirty the brush, you might as well, you know, build your stash as you go. So I'm just tracing out a star for the top of the trees. Again, I keep all my templates together. I've got all the stars together, all the Christmas, all the winter stuff or Christmas stuff together. I'm just putting those on the tops of the trees. 
and I'm going to edge them just to make sure they kind of looked antique to match the rest of the page. You want some consistency, something to make everything work together. If you don't have music paper, you can use a music stamp. Then I have my brown in the bottle that you all saw me mix up in the much, much to do about paint build your stash video. And I'm just doing a dash around these stars. And again, brown because that's what I've done all the shading with. So everything works cohesively. So as I add more and more details, I'm liking this one more and more. In fact, this one, I think, of all of them, was my husband's favorite. So then I grab the Stabilo All Pencil. And I'm putting a little shading on the outside of the trees. I've shaded on the inside of the tree, on the top of the paper, but now I'm doing the outside. And again, here's where I ran into a lot of trouble. Not so much the charcoal pencil one from the, the pillow box, the first pillow box, but this one. When I went to varnish this, because I thought, you know, I spent a lot of time on them, I'm going to varnish them, and maybe we can reuse them from year to year it smudged. So if you use a spray fixative, that's great. I try not to use those because the smells and the chemicals really bother me, which is why I lean more towards shading in ways that are permanent, like the float technique. So you already saw a sneak peek of the one I'm going to do now because some of the video I grabbed afterwards and added things, but I in the video I moved them together. So I'm using this parasol, mini parasol stencil, which I love. I want the big one. And it looks always reminded me of snowflakes. So I'm just stenciling on so that the snowflake part, or what I see is a snowflake. And I've got a mixture of blues there. And I'm kind of dabbing into several blues. And that way you get a good mixture. And, you know, while I like this at this stage, this is my least favorite of the pillow, pillow boxes. And again, I think it's be because what I had in my head, I wasn't able to get on the pillow box. Splattering with white. And looking at it now, this is where I should have left it, but I thought it needed more. So I splattered with white and then I'm splattering with the uh, Prussian blue. And yeah, like I said. It's at this stage that I thought I should have left it alone. Sometimes simple is what you want. But I had all these winter Christmas stamps and I was determined that I was going to use it. So I stamp on here. Now, as you can see, the stamp, I used black, so maybe that was the mistake, and it wasn't dark enough, so then I used the fine liner to fill it in. And maybe the black is too stark, I don't know. But we all go through that. And that's what I want to make sure why I left this in, because I could have be deleted it and you'd have been none the wiser. 
not every page are we going to hit it out of the park. But if you don't try these things, you won't learn what works best for you. So now that I, I, you know, it actually had sat there for a while and I decided, you know, I really don't like it. So I decided I'm going to cut these mittens out, these little mini mittens that I have a template for. And I did another project. You've seen that in my 12 days of Christmas. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to put these mittens on here on the other side. And again, nothing wrong with the idea. It's just, I don't know if they were too big. <laughs> it's just, I was getting very frustrated at this point in time. And I'm going to be totally honest with you on that. You can't really make out the mittens, but you know, when I shade you, it does look a little better. And I am drawing the inside. I find that that keeps it from warping, especially when I've added a lot of wet medium on these tubes. And now I'm just going to do float, float acrylic on the outside of the mittens. And then on the inside. And that's just going to separate the mittens so that you can make out that there are two mittens here, that they're actually mittens because they don't look like mittens at the beginning here. I think maybe if I had gone with the fine liner bottle with white around the mittens, like white stitching, that might have added to it. But at this stage, I was just frustrated and just wanted to be done with this. And I do believe that the next part of the video actually... Uh, happened. There was this, I did some of these over a period of two or three days. It just wasn't going well. So I had Prussian blue and yellow green. And when you mix these colors, you get this gorgeous teal turquoise color that I just absolutely love. So I had that, I was doing a project, a different project, and I had leftovers, so I, I thought, oh, I'm just going to put this on as a background. Of course, I ran out, so I needed to put more Prussian blue and yellow green. And the yellow green is Artist Loft, but Liquitex Basic has a yellow green. And I'll be buying it next time. I bought this tube of yellow green because I thought, oh, I'm not going to use very much of it, so I only need a little bit. And I find I use it a lot. It, 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 it's a wonderful addition. So once I dry this, I get out my Coastal Escape stamp. And I'm stamping with the Prussian Blue. I just want some interesting background here. And because I'm stamping with acrylic paint, it adds a little bit of texture as well. So use it, the first one I stamped before the paint, and that kind of pushes it back a little bit. This stamping comes forward because it's on top. So again, in my stash, I had printed out the word, just different phrases, Christmas phrases. 
they were there. It was for a different project and they never got used. And I thought, okay, you know what? I'm just going to cut these letters out. I just printed it off with my printer and I'm just fussy cutting it. I try with scissors, but I prefer doing it with an X-Acto knife. So this is my preferred way of doing it, but you do it however it works best for you. So I'm just cutting it, you know, as close as I can all these letters because I'm just going to glue these letters on as they are. I could st use stamps and stamped it on, but this is just as fast. And I have one, another one of these letters. So I thought instead of the O, I'm going to put this Christmas ornament in here and spell out the word Noel on this box. So I hope in this video you get to see that, you know, there's lots of ways of creating a background using different techniques. Getting my shelf liner, I th I'm thinking this just needs a little bit of gold. So I'm putting the gold paint out and that's a piece of shelf liner using the, another one as a mask and I'm just putting some gold on there. And that just made it all go together so well. Loved it. I know, shocker, Karen likes gold. And I'm just going to do some shading using the float technique. I did check afterwards on my Silhouette Cameo and you can buy a cut file to cut out these pillow tubes, these pillow boxes in different sizes. So they have a couple different variations that you can buy. So I'm sure Cricut has, has one as well. And I'm pretty sure that you can go and buy these in the stores. I have never really seen them before. But if it's something you'd like, you know, you can put, you know, candy in it. They're nice little stocking stuff that can go, these can go nicely into the stocking. You know, put a gift card inside. You know, some kind of small little, little gift. And as I said earlier, I did give this a thin coat of varnish at the end just to make it because I thought, you know what, my husband and I will use it year after year after year. So I have the letters and as you can see, some of that white is still there. So I just give it a coat of black paint and that just gets rid of the white. So if you're not so perfect with your fussy cutting, this is a solution, especially when it's just black letters. And I'm just gluing it down with gel medium. And the other side on this one, I just left it plain. There is no, no word, no ornament. It's just plain. And I do dry these. Now, I, at this point, I was getting ready to say, thank you for watching. Here are my lovely four of them. But if you remember, I said I was going to be doing five of them. And while I was going to not do it, I thought, I'm going to do it. And I have an idea for a Christmas one that you're going to see after this. And it uses all these very, very bright colors. So I decided, you know, I'm just going to play with these bright colors here. 
So I'm mixing the colors, you know, blue and yellow are going to make green where they cross paths. And I'm blending a little bit in between. The quinacridone magenta and the yellow will make kind of an orangey color in between. And I want to play up that blending. I just want very, very bright colors. As I said, you know, these are the colors that I want to put in the background of an upcoming project, Christmas tree or Christmas project. And there were so many other things going on that I haven't been able to do it. So I thought, oh, I just want to play with these colors. And it really affirmed my decision to use these colors in that Christmas uh, one that you're going to see. Then I get out the Christmas tree stencil, the crafter's workshop, and I'm just using the top part of it. Remember, you don't have to use the entire part of a stencil. And I'm just stamping on black. Black and those bright colors are just going to pop. And I'm just loving that. It's very simple, but yet very striking at the same time. And, you know, as I've said before in this video, sometimes simple is good. I think sometimes we cause too many problems when we try to throw too much at one particular page or project. So on the other side, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I could do another tree on the other side. And I said, no, I'm going to do something else and use a different part of that stencil. And, you know, ever the fan of black and bright colors, I'm also a fan of black and gold. So I grab out the Crafters Workshop Gold Gesso, which I've not used a whole lot of. And I am going to stencil the Merry Christmas on it. And I found that the gesso was more opaque than the gold paint. Whereas the gold paint, you need several layers to build up, especially trying to cover a black background. With the gold gesso, I was able to get away with pretty much one coat of it. So that was good for me to discover. Because, it's you know, some, sometimes we have tools in our toolbox that we don't use a lot of and we don't get good at using them. You got to get them out. You got to start playing with them. So it's a very simple background, but again, using a different part of the stencil on the other side. Just edging with gold. Doesn't matter if it's a page or a canvas, I always seem to want to edge it. And I'm getting out my gold paint and I'm going to outline this black just to give it more pop and more shine. Using my fine line bottle. And as I said, I'll put the links to some of the products that I've used here, especially if they're ones I really love. In the description box below, thank you for shopping through my Amazon links. That little bit of gold just, just works so well. So I'm going to say thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the video with your creative friends. Give it a try. If you make anything that you were inspired by this video in the five different projects that I showed you, uh, share it on my Facebook group. Bye for now.